Wow. <laughs> Take three. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Bourbon Bites Whiskey Reviews with a Gaming Twist. Welcome to another Saturday night stream. <laughs> Off to a great start here tonight. Uh, man, I had music going. I was just enjoying. I was jamming out. I forgot to forgot to unmute myself, but we're good to go now. So, so thank y'all so much for bearing with me. I was a little late today. I we were just finishing up dinner. Um, you know how Saturdays go. Get a little behind. Things get a little hectic. That's probably why I forgot to unmute myself. So, so good to go now. Want to give a shout out to everyone here who was pregame chatting earlier. I asked the question about your thoughts on terroir. I'm gonna pronounce that wrong at least ten times tonight. So, still dig digesting the food. So, <laughs> so we are tasting through Waterford Irish Single Malt Whiskey. Not just that, but we're tasting through both their organic expression and three different single farm expressions, which relates back to the whole concept of their terroir focus. So, it would be a really good discussion. I'm really glad to have this. This is more going to be more like my Thursday night streams than like a Saturday stream. Saturdays are usually pretty pretty casual, pretty laid back, but I'm not going to be live next Thursday. So I wanted to make sure we had a pretty good St. Patrick's Day stream before the holiday. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not planning anything else for St. Patrick's Day. So next Wednesday, not next Wednesday, the following, the following Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day, but the day after that on Thursday... Um, I will be doing a stream with Ed from the Rock Gut Review. We're going to do part one on his channel and part two on my channel. It's going to be all Irish whiskey. So really looking forward to that. So this is just kind of like a little start into that. Do you want to give a shout out to my mods here today? I see Brandon. Brandon, what is up? Good to see you, man. Um, also some plenty of patrons here tonight. I see Sugar Kitty. Thank you so much, Sugar Kitty. Sugar Kitty just upped their tier to the next level on Patreon. So Sugar Kitty is getting one of the Bourbon Bites Challenge coins, um, which are available to patrons only at this moment. Um, let's see if I can do a little bit better with the focus this time. <laughs> yeah, so they are t modeled after old arcade tokens. They are shiny, they're not that shiny. That's just because I have a light on them, but <laughs> they do say no match value back on the back. Now there are only 74 of these left. So 20, 26 of these have already been claimed. So there are only 100 in this first batch. So if you wanna get your hands on a Bourbon Bites Challenge coin to put on the top of your Glen Cairn, um, definitely become a patron as for as little as two dollars a month you get access to the ability to purchase these um, they are for sale like I said for patrons only I will open it up to the public if we don't sell out um, but these, these things are going pretty quick I just announced them this week and we're already down uh, to 74 so so like I said get your get it while you can um, a few other patrons here tonight I see Adriana Whiskey Mountains what's up Adriana wheels a good friend of the channel here Nick good to see you too uh, let's see, I, I wanted to read some of these chats earlier about um, your thoughts on terroir. So, we'll get to those in just a bit. Zofer, Zofer was actually the first person to get his whiskey or bourbon bites uh, challenge coin. So, Zofer posted some really awesome photos of those over on our Discord channel. Which, by the way, if you're not there, why not? Bourbonbites.com. You can join our community there. We do hangouts there. We do gaming there. Plenty of stuff like that over on our Discord channel. Emily Chambers coming into the room here. Emily is our other mod here tonight. It's good to see you, Emily. I see Todd Koopa, Mike Meyer. Ah, oh, man. So many people. Cool running. JG. So many awesome faces here on a Saturday. Glad y'all are spending Saturday with me. But guess what? You don't just get this stream of me. If you may have noticed the pin chat over in your little chat bar over here, I will be going live on Twitch tonight to play part two of none other than uh man it's not it's not it's not teed up but <laughs> i love you colonel sanders which is the the dating simulator game so this is i love you colonel sanders this is the dating simulator game y'all all loved part one of this over on youtube so we are doing part two here on twitch so if you're not quite following me on twitch Go to twitch.tv slash bourbon bites and you will get to see me play part two of this epic, epic game. Trust me, it's it's a hoot. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. So, like I said, over on Twitch, we're following this stream um, in about an hour or so. We're gonna go play that. See what kind of crazy, crazy stuff we get into over there. So <laughs> so yes. Yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're drinking here tonight on this stream. We are drinking Waterford Irish whiskey. Now, Waterford's a pretty new distillery in the scheme of Irish whiskey. They started in 2016. So they are definitely, definitely a newbie. However, 
they're not that they don't come with a lack of experience so mark rainier i think that's how you pronounce it is the guy that founded it he actually started it where their location that they're at now used to be where they made guinness beer so it was the waterford brewery before it was the waterford distillery um and diageo used them to make guinness which is a pretty cool pretty cool story pretty cool location but not only that he actually helped relaunch um the brucolotic 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 brand wow y'all y'all know how i am with my pronunciations <laughs> so he is a big name in the industry so he took a really unique approach with this distillery um as, as you see in the title of this video they are focused on terroir now i'm probably mispronouncing that i didn't take french in high school i took spanish and i took italian in college so probably mispronouncing it but it's the idea if you're not familiar with what it is it's actually a wine term i think but it is basically just um the concept of the interaction of soil, microclimate, and place on a plant's growth. So it's it, they're they're looking at it from a multi from a barley perspective. So they their philosophy is the barley that they use in each of their products should tell a story, and it should all be different. So like I said, we have their their organic um, Gaia. I think is the first one we're gonna start with here tonight. That one's actually a blend, but all the, the three other expressions we're trying here tonight are single farms, and they do a really cool job on their website telling you about the farm so we're going to go through their website they all have little secret codes on the bottle so we're going to enter those codes in on the website and find out a little bit more about each of these so brook lottie thank you emily <laughs> I, I have you get mods for every reason you not only do you moderate the chat but you, you help me out not look less stupid <laughs> what's up what's up donnie good to see you another mod here tonight um brian brinicky of course mod and patron so, so good to see you brian so yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pour the organic. Let's go ahead and something in our glass because I actually haven't drank in a while. I had a drink, like cocktail around noon, but like I meant to make a, actually a um, an Irish whiskey and ginger ale, which we were talking about on Discord earlier. That's my go-to mixed drink. I know, I know, ginger beer is the more traditional, better way to have it. But when I want a cheap, cheap mixed drink, I always get Irish whiskey and ginger ale. Lately, I've been using Jameson um, cask mates. I, we bought the IPA stout or <laughs> IPA stout IPA cask. I love the stout one. I didn't really like the IPA by itself, but I thought, first of all, it was $5 cheaper. So, because you know me, I'm, I'm pretty cheap. <laughs> but it was $5 cheaper, um, but it does work really, really well with the ginger ale. So, that's what I meant to have, but I forgot to pour it, and I was running late. So, <laughs> let's just go. we're going to roll with it. I might, I'll make one before our Colonel Sanders stream. By the way, with Colonel Sanders, what we're also going to do is I'm going to do a bunch of sample bottle kills. But the unique part of that is... I have no idea what they are. These are left over from blind flights, which I made the mistake of not labeling after the fact. We, we've done this before. <laughs> it, it happened a lot. So we will be tasting through random samples. I have no idea what they are. I can't reveal to you at the end what they are because I don't know. So it's just going to be a fun, like, oh, like if I, if I mess up the conversation with Colonel Sanders and I don't get in his pants, um, then I'm going to have to take a shot of random whiskey A from six months ago. <laughs> so it should be fun. Um, haven't had a drink in a while since noon. Well... I'm just saying, I've, I've sobered up since then. We we actually, speaking of terroir, great segue actually, we replanted our patio garden today. That's kind of been our project today. We did it last year. We stopped maintaining them basically. We did well through the summer, but once it got winter, a lot of them died and a lot of them got out of control. Um, but some of them came back to life, which is weird. Apparently like, like basil and peppermint just don't die, no matter what you do to them. So um, we ended up just, we left the peppermint, but basil, we're like, yeah, we gotta start over because this, this is a mess, it's like a massive bush. So. Today we've been planting, digging in soil, um, so that's kind of a great segue into this stream about the soil um, that this whiskey comes from. So um, these samples, Brandon asked a good question, he said, where did these samples come from? These actually were from a tasting, um, I wasn't able to t attend, it was by, you know, I, I don't remember, I think, I'm pretty sure it was from the Southern California Whiskey Club. I could be wrong, it could be from, um, there's a Los Angeles group that also does a virtual tasting. I, again, I wasn't able to make it because they do their tasting on Thursday nights, which y'all know, Thursday nights are kind of kind of my thing. I got to be here for you guys, which by the way, if you missed Thursday, it was really fun. We had um, rabbit, um, a representative from Rabbit Hole Distillery join us. We took a virtual tour of the distillery. He walked around with a selfie stick, took us up in the air, like showing off the huge, massive stills. So definitely if you missed Thursday Night Streams, go check it out. It's on my channel now. Um, tons of fun. Like It was a great guy. Adam's awesome. Would love to have him back on the channel here soon. So... <laughs> So, so uh, Emily says, I don't look stupid, but I do know words when autocorrect doesn't kill me. <laughs> yeah, so they go, Zofer, see, Zofer's the, Zofer's the expert here. He says they go dormant for the winter and then come back. Yeah, I thought I just killed them, <laughs> but apparently they, they come back. So we're doing, like, we're trying again, um, planted some different ones now. We have some sweet mint going now. We have some, I think we did Thai basil instead of, like, a sweet basil this time. 
Um, again, we're totally new. we're not <laughs> we're not gardeners, but we have a nice patio now, so we we wanted to have some um, some herbs growing there. So, anyways, enough to talk about my garden. Let's let's go ahead and um, pour us our first dram of the night. Um, so these all are one ounce samples. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour all four of them, but I'm gonna use my um, my Bourbon Bites Challenge coin um, to wow, I, that just like glows. It's like it's like magical. I'm gonna use my Bourbon Bites Challenge coin uh, to keep them keep them nice and and um, protected while they're already poured. So that's another great choice. If, if you don't know, a lot of people use whiskey challenge coins for that purpose to sit on their glens if they want to like take a break from it, sip on something else, and come back to it. Keeps it from going getting too evaporated. You know, you know how whiskey gets cloudy after a while. So this is that's great use for them. Um, yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to pour all these. Why not? It's only it's only one ounce each, and it's only four ounces. So it's, it's definitely gonna definitely gonna. It's not like I'm gonna like struggle to get through these, like sometimes. What's up, Guy Davis? Guy Davis says it's great to be here on a Saturday. Guy, it's so good to see you. I I feel like yeah, we we always miss each other. I feel like you're on earlier again. At California times, I totally understand. But, um, oh, what's up? Uh, is it Cyan? 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 Um, they say Gaia is the best, but that's a blend. Yeah, I wanted to start with that one because I wanted to dive deep into the individuals after. I wanted to taste what it is as a blend. Um, but I do want to see, you know. Can I pull out the differences between each of these farms? Like I said, I'm going to show you guys the different farms. It's really cool. It's um, they they really do an awesome job breaking it down. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and get these poured. Just so again, I would have done this before the stream, but y'all know I was um, <laughs> a little delayed here. Okay, so let's go ahead and this one right here. This actually might be the first one you drink, but eh, I have it on the end for now. So all right, got all four of those poured. Now let me add my challenge coins on. <laughs> Brian says, oh, it's so very shiny. It is, it, it's shiny. Now don't get me wrong, it's very, very shiny, but this the camera does make it look a little shinier. So let me go ahead and get those poured, got them. All right, now let me put my challenge coins on my glasses. And they, like I said, they sit on top really, really nicely. No worries about it, you know. I was worried, I was kind of worried when they, when they told me that it was gonna be sandblasted. So I don't know if you can see there, but you'll see that was like some kind of texture texture on the back i was worried that it might like risk sc scratching the glass but it's it's not it's like super smooth so i was really thankful when i saw that in person I was like i was a little worried but no it actually it's really it's really nice so i also do want to give a shout out and i missed one of my patron shout outs i want to give a shout out to adam free adam free actually just became a annual patron that means he subscribed for the full year which by the way if you guys do that you get two months free so if you've been considering joining patreon even at the two dollar level and want to get access to these challenge coins if you subscribe annually which for the $2 level, that would only be $20 for the year, um, you get access to be able to buy these challenge coins. So again, you can do it free too. It's not like I'm like <laughs> making up huge paywall or anything. So, um, oh, oh, nice. To, oh, so uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to say Cian, I'm Cian, Cayenne. <laughs> I'm, I'm from South Carolina. I don't pronounce things well. They're actually from Waterford, not from the distillery, but they're they're not they're not from the distillery but they are from this area well that's really awesome well thank you so much for coming in i'd love to you know i i'm very i'm not familiar with it until now so if if you have any like random interesting facts about the the location please tell us i would love to hear because I, again i'm not super familiar with the area i'm pretty I, I dive deep into scotch i'm a bourbon guy by the way if, if you haven't met me yet i'm a bourbon guy um but I've dived really deep into scotch. I've had some really great guests tell me about different distilleries. I haven't had anyone on from uh, Irish whiskey distillery, so I think we may have to change that. So unfortunately, no one from Waterford is joining me here tonight um, from the distillery, but they did do a good job. They did, they did retweet it. I appreciate them so much for sharing, getting the word out. So I'm wondering if Kian, Kian, okay, I'm sorry. You know, I should have said Kian because Kian is a very popular name over here. I just, I just assume, especially when you said you're from, you're from, you're from Ireland. It's probably, I thought it was different, but <laughs> well, great to have you here. Um, and hopefully you enjoy the stream. Maybe you can hopefully correct my pronunciation because I'm going to pronounce all of these really wrong. So, all right, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start with the, the guy. Now, like I said, this one is a hundred, these are all around a hundred dollars. This one's 110 US dollars. Um, this is named after the goddess of yore, which is a personification of mother earth herself, uh, which makes sense. This is Ireland's first whiskey distilled from certified organic Irish barley. So it's the first certified organic Irish whiskey, which I think is really cool. I mean, I think a lot of people don't really think about that. I know people talk about organic vodka, but I don't hear people talking about organic whiskey. I think it's a really cool, cool concept, and I'm here for it. As long as it means that things are, you know, produced in a more, I don't know if it means necessarily means it's sustainable, but I always, if, if they go extra above and beyond um, to make sure things are quality, you know, I'm here for that. So, 
So let's go ahead and give this a nose. Like I said, these are all these are all pretty young. This distillery didn't start until 2016, and they aren't doing any kind of sourcing like we see in a lot of American distilleries. So this one is only about four years. So it's pretty young for Irish whiskey because you guys know I love the older Irish whiskeys. I've never, I don't think I've had an Irish whiskey this young. So I'm very excited to see, you know, how it translates. So I've had young bourbon, but I, I mean, I've had I've had young Scotch, but I don't think I've ever had young Irish whiskey except like Jameson. But does that really count? Is that's still pretty? I would guess Jameson's like six to eight years old if I had to guess, but I could be wrong. All right, so this one is actually a blend of four different types of oak. 42% first fill U.S. oak, 17% virgin U.S. oak, 18% vendo naturel, which basically is just a fancy way to say fortified sweet wine oak. So it was cast that was used previously for that. Um, and the 23% premium French oak. Now, all of these use a combination of those. So as we get into the single origins, we're going to find out what specifically blend they use of those barrels. It is barreled at 50% ABV, which y'all know. Y'all know I love a high proof spirit. Um, of course, non-chill filtered and no color added. So let's go ahead and give it a nose. Oh, wow. Ha, ah, that's bright. It, 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 is, it does taste a little young. I mean, again, or smells a little young. Not necessarily like a corn way. It's very grain forward. I, it, I think young, like like grains, like in a Scotch or an Irish whiskey, come across as like a cereal note. There's like some sweet, sweet cereal there. Maybe a bit of honey. Yeah, like a honey nut Cheerios, if even that. It it does remind me. It's it's very familiar. I'm trying to think what it's remind me of. Again, bourbon guy here, so my my notes on Irish whiskey may not be you know. Up to, up to par with some experts, like people, especially from the area. Um, Sugar Kitty says, if you want to have someone from an Irish whiskey as a guest, reach out to Whiskey Crusaders. They're, they've had Teeling a couple times. Teeling, I would love to have Teeling on. I've actually met a couple of their ambassadors at local um, local events, and they're, they're really cool. They're an awesome distillery. I actually haven't bought a bottle yet, so maybe maybe I should reach out to them, have them on the channel, and buy a bottle for the stream. Yeah, that's, that's really light on the nose. It's not, you know, jumping out of the glass. Um, that, that proof does show up though. So, um, so, okay. So Adriana, no, this is a blend. So th they use different barrels. These are all, none of these are single barrel. These are all small batch. So th this is a batch of that percent of that. So like most of it is, let me go back to that. Most of it is first fill us oak barrels. So yeah, it's, it's not like they split up the stave, but that's a good question. That's a great, great question. So let me see, let me just pull up Gaia organic. I was going to say, because there was one more piece of information I, went, I meant to share. I meant to have that pulled up. The other one was you get all the information right there on their website, but but this one. Um, so let's see. Let's see what they say here. Yeah, so this one, like I said, $110. Um, I, thought, I thought it was going to show how many bottles were made. It's pretty This is pretty widely available, basically. Um, so let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and give it a taste, shall we? Cheers, guys. Thanks for joining me on a Saturday. Definitely young grain. Um, again, it goes back to that cereal note, almost like a young scotch. It's not, it's smoky in a way. Not not quite like, not, not peaty, of course, but like a like a smoke ashiness to it. Um, huh. It's almost beer. It's almost like a beer. Like there's like a um, maltiness. Like I'm sure it's the malt, the malt aspect of that. Going back to the nose, it's it's still really sweet. It's like a honey sweetness. Maybe there's a fruitiness. It's like a it's like a stewed pear, like a cooked pear. Oh yeah, did I say first fill was the same as virgin? I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't mean that. I, I know. Yeah, first fill is like one use, like filled with bourbon, aged, and then sent off. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to confuse those, but yeah, <laughs> virgin oak is um, unused. I could be now if Irish if Ireland describes virgin as something different, then please let me know. That's it's really weird on the on the front of the nose. It's it's definitely different. It's unlike any Irish whiskey I've ever smelled. Normally Irish, I either I either get like a really, really strong dark fruitiness, which a lot of times they use sherry cask, or I get a shortbread cookie note. This one doesn't quite have that. I'm I'm curious, I'm gonna go ahead and go for a second taste though. Yeah, it's hot. I mean, that, that, that it definitely comes off as honestly. I would think that drinks a little bit hotter than 100 proof. But it comes off like 110 proof. I don't particularly love this one. 
Um, again, it's my first taste of this, so I don't actually, <laughs> I've never tried any of these before, so there's a chance I may not like any of them, but you know what? I really appreciate the craft, and um, y'all are going to see what I'm talking about, I promise. I'm going to show you the website, how detailed and how deep they go with how transparent. Honestly, probably the most transparent thing I've ever seen, even compared to Compass Box. Y'all know Compass Box and Scotch is very transparent. This is next level. So once we get into the other ones, I'll um, show off their, their ter how do they, I don't even know how they pronounce it, but terroir it's, it's pronounced the same way but it has the word ear is that how you pronounce it ear which is the word for ireland um in irish i believe again totally guess game i am part irish but i'm not i've never been so it's really cool though i'll, I'll show you all that so yeah i'm gonna let this i'm gonna go back to this one because this one is the blend i do want to see what these single single farms are all about so putting a little whiskey hat back on that glass right there let's move on to one of the single farms so one of these I have is called Rathclaw. 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 <laughs> God, these guys these guys make fun of me, so um, I, you say I'm, I probably won't like any of them, to be fair. But, I mean, you know what? I, I totally don't. Again, I didn't. The distillery didn't sponsor the stream, so I'm being honest. They just helped me promote it, which is awesome. So, yeah, if, even if I don't like it, um, it's, it's a really cool experience, and I love how they focus on something that none of the other ones... Not that I don't want to say none of the other ones are focusing on, but... So for the, focus on something different. <laughs> or those, to be fair. I don't know. All right. So this first one we're doing is the Rathcloth. Rathcloth. <laughs> Whatever that is. But I'm going to show you guys their website. I'm going to show you how freaking crazy this is. Hold on. All right. So this is their website. So this, like I said, that's the word I was saying. Tierra. Tier Maybe that's how you pronounce it. But um, So let's go ahead and look at this one. They give you a specific code on their website. So let me, this code. Let me pull it over here so I can see it. All right. Oop. Sure. All right. So let me enter in the code for this one. So this one is F016 E0101. Let's see what let's see what comes up when we pull this up. All right. So this is Rathclaw. <laughs> I'm going to stop saying it. You can just read the word there. So this is a farm in obviously the region here's a photo of it compared to how far it is from the distillery um so it's kind of f pretty north from there um these are all the the 1.1 edition by the way i didn't say that early but um they're all the the first batch 1.1 of each of these i think they're going to do more batches as we go on so we know for a fact that this was harvested in august of 2015 distilled week 26 of 2016 again the 50 percent abv oh nearly almost right at four years um, so similar to the blend that we had earlier, that was around four years too. Um, but this one's also 13,000 bottles of it were made and it was bottled in August of 2020, but that's not all. We're going to get some more information here too. So, so welcome Shane. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Um, so let's go ahead and scroll, scroll down. I'm going to show you guys just how detailed this gets. It tells you the story of the region, um, especially the farm there. Um, but not only that, listen to this guys, you can actually play the sounds of the farm. So like, here, let me, let me skip ahead so you can hear it. Wow. Lots of birds, lots of birds, but we're going to listen to this as we drink this one. Cause we're going to have the full experience. Let me know if that's too loud. I'll turn it down. But these are the natural sounds from this farm, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and look a little bit for this. The timeline of when it was grown, bottled, all that stuff. They break down every single day here when it was sown, when it was harvested, when it arrived at the distillery, fermented, and sent for bottling. Crazy, crazy, um, crazy stuff. Um, cool. Oh, cool running. Oh, that's why your name's Cool Running. Oh, gotcha. But up in the north. Well, I'm glad I finally solved that mystery. <laughs> but not only that, okay, look, I'm not going to watch this video, but they have a whole video talking about this farm, talking about this, what they bring to the whiskey. It's crazy detailed. I mean, they don't have this on all of them, but they do have it on this one. Um, shows you a bit of a map here of where they are at. So Cool Running is from, um, he says from, where are you from? Rathcool? Rathcool, where's that? Wait, is it is it far north? I'm just going to see if I see it. Where is it? Uh, there's two or more. Oh, no. I think, think it might be too far for me to find here. There's Rath Lord. All right. <laughs> Anyways, Adriana says she loves loves. I told you guys. Not only that, look, Adriana, I mean, you'll appreciate this. They show you the soil. Like, it's, it's super scientific. Um, talk about the yeast strain here, which they're using the distiller's yeast, um, the variety, fermentation period, um, and they give you some tasting notes from the distiller themselves. 
Then look at this. This is the wood, the actual casks they use for this release. So you're seeing these are the first fill ones. They are from Speyside Cooperage. Um, they're the Virgin Oaks are from Kelvin Cooperage, which y'all are very familiar. If y'all been watching my streams lately, y'all are very familiar with that one. They provide some of the best barrels, at least in a lot of the craft distilleries. They provide some amazing barrels. And you see the French oak they're using here. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that, but there you go, right there. <laughs> um, and then they show you what the what the um, Vendo Natural casks are. And these, in this instance, these are sherry casks. So breaks it down here. Um, what's the most? This was 31% first fill, 25% of the sherry, 25% French, and then 19% of the virgin. So pretty pretty balanced, I would say. Definitely first fill is getting the priority here. Um, yeah, so Emily says we love experimenting here. Even if you don't like it, your notes may help someone figure out something they need to know. Exactly. This is my first experience with this distillery. Now, I know the Whiskey Vault did a really, really awesome video with them. They went to tour the distillery. That was last year, I think. Um, su such a fantastic video. One of my favorite videos from them. Definitely check that out. I honestly love everything about what this distillery is doing, other than the fact that, yeah, they're only four years old. But, you know, can you blame them for that? Hopefully, hopefully we'll see them 10 years down the road. They'll be putting out some 12-year stuff. Man, I can't wait for that. So... All right, so now that you guys saw that, let's go back. Let's go back to this whiskey. I'll go ahead and I'll turn this down a little bit just to make sure it's not too loud. The sound effects. <laughs> Adriano wants Drunk Cliffy to come back and pronounce these later. Well, Drunk Cliffy may attempt to pronounce these while he's hitting up Colonel Sanders on our Twitch stream following this. So, like I said, if you guys missed it earlier, once I'm done with this stream, I'm heading over to Twitch to play part two of the amazing, incredible dating simulator. I love you, Colonel Sanders. Um, I put a link to it over there and down in the description below. If you're not yet following me on Twitch, I'm trying to get the 50 followers. We are at 40. So if any of you guys have Twitch accounts or you don't have a Twitch account but you've been curious about it and you want to create an account just to support me, we can maybe get to 50 tonight. We'll see. We'll see. I would absolutely love if you follow me. And I think there will be an animation that pops up here if you do follow me on Twitch. So, anyways, let's go ahead and give this one a taste. So, let me know, if, again, let me know if that is the, um, let me know if that's the, too loud in the background. <laughs> All right, so this one. Um, um, Kian says French oak barrel purchases will make the future of the brand. I think French oak is that is that pretty popular with Irish whiskey? I don't. I honestly haven't dived deep into like what types of barrels most of the distillers are using. Um, I, I love when distillers use sherry casks, but I know that's not all they're using. Um, so I'm curious. Wow, the nose on this one. I'm loving the nose. Nose blows away the nose of the organic for me just at the beginning. This one's still. It's still got that kind of like beer as aspect to it it's almost like for those of you that have been to a distillery um which we talked about earlier on our last stream um there's a smell in the fermenting room that is like a kind of like a sour beer kind of note this one has that but it's a little more vanilla a little more like that married with the oak still fruity not quite the pear though it's almost like a i would say it's more citrusy for sure not quite not quite pear i guess similar but <laughs> says the girl who cussed at a bird after filming the other day. Well, Adriana, you, you gotta deal with this all the time, so I'm just I'm artificial. I'm basically I'm basically your channel, just faking it. I should have had my green screen too and put up a mountain behind me. Then I could just basically be Whiskey Mountains. Just kidding. <laughs> Love your channel. <laughs> if you guys don't if y'all aren't subscribed to Whiskey Mountains, go check out her channel. Please, she does an awesome content over there. Alright, on the nose, I I like this one a lot more. Yeah, it's it's still kind of honey sweet, but it's more of a um well-rounded and a little more um, citrus. So I'm digging it. So let's go to give a taste. Cheers, guys. Mm. Oh, yeah. I actually really like this one. So um, Kian was saying earlier, <laughs> they don't think I would like any of these. I dig this one. It does, it, it has, it's way less apparent on the like palate that it's a younger whiskey. It's more, it's still grainy, but it's like a, it's like more of like a hay kind of note, like a walking out to a barnyard, smelling the fresh hay, maybe chewing on it a little. Did you guys do that as kids? Did y'all even go to bar farms as kids? I grew up in South Carolina, so we, we grew up, my sister had a horse. Um, it was a thing. So, yeah, man, that, that's really nice on the, on the palate. It's, it's still, it's a little, it's bright. Bright's, bright's a good way to say it. It's, it's apple-y. Apple and it's not like an apple pie, I don't think. I think it's more of like a 
Not a green apple either. Hmm. That's so interesting because normally I go either that way, either of those two ways. I either go green apple or like a baked apple pie. This one does kind of have some of the like the not quite as smoky as the first one, but it does have like a little bit like a char. So like a charred apple. That is so weird. That's not a thing. But it's not quite like the the gooey gooey rich apple pie. It's more of like a man. I don't know. If you ever roasted an apple over an open fire, <laughs> hopefully you don't do that. Maybe you do. I don't know. Man, that's that's actually really interesting. I gotta come back to this one. I'm gonna do a taste test of all three of these back to back. So let's go ahead and move on to our second single farm. Um, let's let's go ahead and fade out the sound effects from this one. Let's go ahead and pull that down. There we go. So that was that was awesome experiencing that one. But we gotta go to another farm. So why is the music still playing? There we go. Okay. So thank you so much, Adriana. Yes, if you guys haven't quit yet, hit the like button. Please hit it. It does help the channel, especially with these streams where I'm just like winging it and I don't have a distillery rep on. Be able to do this and show them like, hey, I did this. If y'all want to come on and talk about your brand, please do. Um, so make sure to hit that like button. And of course, if you like the channel, if you like what you're doing, seeing here tonight, I do bourbon, I do Irish whiskey, I do scotch, and I sometimes do rum. So if you like what you see, make sure to hit the subscribe button too. I'd really appreciate it. We're aiming for 3,000 in the next couple months. We'll see if we can hit it. We are only about 220 away at this point. So every little bit counts, y'all. Every little bit. Um, and if you want to be notified every time I go live, you can hit the bell button down there too, and it'll just send you a little ding, Clifton's live. I promise I won't bombard you with tons of those. So like I said, because I'm not going to be live next Thursday anyway, so if you get one, it'll be because I'll be premiering a review of a new rye whiskey. So keep an eye out for that one. So all right, let's go Let's go back to our ter terroir screen. So let's go ahead and try this next one. So let me pull up its code here real quick. So this next one is called Dunmore. Now this is also 1.1. Let me enter their code in here oh actually that, that was already there look look at me being prepared and not realizing it <laughs> so this is dunmore so let's go ahead and play the sounds of dunmore let's go ahead and get it going similar similar let's go ahead and do that now let's, let's go ahead and scroll down and see what we're seeing here now again it is it is similar region these are all pretty close together soil is about the same um yeast strain is the same but this is different tasting notes altogether. Now look at this. This is what I think is really cool about this one. This one, they use a lot of first fill barrels. And do you guys see something? See something that looks pretty cool here? Heaven Hill Distillery. These are X Heaven Hill barrels. So that that makes me excited. Y'all know I'm a Heaven Hill fanboy. So seeing they used Heaven Hill barrels makes me really excited for this. I'm really excited to see if I can taste some of those um, some of those typical Heaven Hill notes. That that caramel. Y'all know my, my typical Heaven Hill note is like a caramel baked good, like walking to a bakery. So we'll see if we get some of that. We'll see if that shows up there on the palate. Um, so Todd says, spent a day in Waterford in 2016. Lovely town. Really enjoyed seeing the sights. I would love to absolutely just visit just Ireland in general. I Again, I have like tons of Irish blood in me, so I would absolutely love to see the country. This area seems beautiful. And, and then um, Kean says this is actually the closest one to Waterford. So let's go back to the map real quick since we're looking at it. So yeah, this is this is where this is at. And then Waterford is like right... Oop, wait, maybe not. Oh, maybe I zoomed out too far. I probably moved it around too much. So, But anyways, this is the closest one to Waterford. Good to know. So should be some salin salination. Oh, okay. So like some of like that briny salt note. I love that on a good scotch. So I'm excited to see a little bit of that there. Um, this one is elevation is a lot lower than the other one. Elevation is only 270 to 315 feet. Um, and also, sunlight is only an average of five to five and a half hours. So, again, all the information you can love. I do want to scroll down here. Also use Kelvin Cooperage, of course, for the virgin oak. Uh, let's see here. French oak. And then they also use sherry casks here. So, here's the breakdown of this one. It's pretty similar. You can see there's a little bit more of that first fill U.S., which I'm excited for. Um, oh, what's up? Sorry, <laughs> I didn't pre-position that. Mr. Whiskey Shits gave a $5 super chat. Cheers to you, Mr. Whiskey Shit. So good to see you here on a Saturday. Um, if you, like I said, if you're not, if you, if you aren't a patron, or if you don't want to become a patron, you can always send a super chat down below. Really does help the channel, um, and you get your name featured over my face because that's pretty, that's pretty where it's at right now. Let me move that in case anyone else sends one. So I don't, I would hate to cover my, I would hate to cover my beautiful face. Wow, that's not what I would say. <laughs> that's what I'd say if I have a guest on. Don't say that right now. Okay, anyways, 33% first fill U.S. barrels, 18% virgin, 25% French, and then 24% Vindo. So maybe we're going to get a lot of that Heaven Hill influence here. Let's go ahead and see. This is a U.S. only re release, according to Kian. Um, tier, terrar. Terrar? Steven says he thinks it's pronounced Tier R. I thought it was Terroir. 
terroir or terroir. Hmm. I don't know. I, you guys tell me how's it pronounced. That's well. Let's ask Kian. Kian's the the, the Irish one in the room. <laughs> All right. Well, actually, cool cool running is also Irish. So, all right. Let's go ahead and try this Dunmore. Oh, I guess I should go in a full screen. I'll turn the music down a little. <laughs> I keep calling it music. It's not music. Turn this. Turn the natural sounds down a bit. Um, let's go back to this view here. So let's 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 go ahead and try this one. Todd Cooper says, if you ever get a chance to visit Ireland, definitely do it. The sites are fantastic and the people are even better. Well, I'm learning that tonight. I'm meeting some amazing Irish people here tonight. I'm so glad. Again, I need to meet, have the people from the distillery on. I'd love it. Hey, Waterford, if you're watching this, please send me an email, contact at bourbonbites.com. You can um, reach out and I'd love to have you on the channel and talk a little bit more. I am, unfortunately, will be out of your whiskey after tonight because I only have little samples. So I <laughs> may have to pick up a bottle um, for that stream, but I would well, love to have you on. Terroir. Terroir. Tear war. Okay. So it's not war, it's war. Tear war. Gotcha. All right. On the nose, this one's not quite jumping out of the glass like the other one was. Lots of that malt, malt cereal note. Not quite as fruity. It's a little, I don't want to say bland, but it's a little less complex on the nose. Definitely, these are all bottled at, at 100 proof. This one definitely doesn't jump out of the glass. Is that high proof? Uh, thank you, Sugar Kitty. <laughs> saying, saying it pronounced. Tastes like where it comes from. Well, that's what we're seeing. I will say, if that's the only difference, these are again, these are all distilled at the same distillery. They use the same method. All they're changing up is a little bit of variation of the types of casts they're using, but they're changing up that barley from the different farms across Scot or Ireland. So that's what makes them unique. They really are diving deep into doesn't make a difference and well i gotta say so far between between the blend and between that first farm we tried there's a difference but this is the second this is only the second farm so let's go ahead and see if there's a difference with this on the palate cheers guys okay more similar to the blend so i have a feeling there's a, a good chunk of this one in the blend it's like a dry cereal less sweet less honey nut cheerios more of a like a healthy version of honey nut cheerios so like it's so like a like a plain cheerio without the honey flavor oh man this one's hard to pull something else out of that again it falls back into what i don't particularly love about it i i don't i like that cereal grain note but i like when it has a little bit more depth has some more like citrus notes in in addition to it <laughs> Emily says, thanks for being our ambassador tonight, uh, Kian. Yeah, Kian, uh, seriously, thank you so much for showing up. I appreciate you being here. Um, and I want to do more Irish, so let me know if, if, I'm, if I'm doing a decent job. I, I'm going to do a red breast, um, red breast cast strength stream in two weeks where I'm blinding all the red breast cast strength. That's going to be tons of fun. I'm so excited for that, honestly. I've been wanting to do it on my own, but I'm like, nope, Clifton, save it for the stream. It'll be a fun stream. Don't ruin, don't ruin the surprise. So, Yeah, Adriana wants to know the influence of the soils, so. Yeah, so Waterford, if you're watching, <laughs> these guys want to see you on. All right, let's go and give let's give it a second taste. Let's give it a second shot to I guess maybe redeem itself. And it could just be a lack of experience with young Irish whiskey. I'm not seeing much more beyond that graininess to it. It's balanced. It doesn't like it's not spiky. I did say earlier it's like a beer. It's not like a sour. It's not like a distiller's beer. Like it's kind of sour. It smells a little more sour. It tastes nice. It's very pleasant to a drink. But we're talking about hundred dollar whiskeys here. So would I pay a hundred dollars for this one? I don't think I would. Now that that first one, the first one, what what was that one called? Uh, Rathclock. Rathclock. <laughs> that one, I would definitely consider buying that one if it was a hundred dollars. This one I think I would probably pass on, but let's. Go. There's still one more to try, one more region to try. So let's see if Dun Bell, no, not not Dun More, Dun Bell. Let's see what it brings to this whiskey. So let's go ahead and close out of this. Let's see what we can bring up for Dun Bell. Don Nishida, good to see you. Um, Don, we are taking an experiment and ex we're taking a whiskey experiment, which is what Waterford is doing, and we're experimenting with that experiment. So <laughs> it's definitely a fun ride. So okay, let's go ahead and enter our code for our third. And final whiskey of the night. 
Which, by the way, Whiskey Night on this YouTube stream, not Twitch. We're going to drink way more on Twitch. Um, Steven says, yeah, just needs more time in the barrel. Sour would not what you would look for in a young distillate. Yeah, I, I think so, too. They, again, they started in 2016. This was put in the barrel probably at the very beginning of when they started started out. Still digesting that food for dinner. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and try this this final one. Now, this one is Done Bell. So let me enter their code in. Let me make sure I got it right. Oop. Yeah, that's good. Why is this not entering it in? Uh, let me refresh. All right. So this one is Done Bell. Let's see what we can learn about them. Rothclaw. Rothclaw. That's way easier than what I was trying to say. <laughs> Rathclaw. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Man, I, I need, this is why I need a rep, because I'm mispronouncing everything. Okay, this one. This guy looks very happy, first of all. He looks very proud to be using their barley in this in this whiskey. So let's go ahead and learn a bit about um, Dunbell. So let's see. Three years, eight months. These are all about the same age. Now, this one is the most limited release. This one is only 6,000 barrels. This is also for the USA market. Um, so, Kian, curious. Do they release different... Are the releases completely different what we're getting versus what you guys are getting? I'm curious to hear, like, are there... Do they do the single farm kind of thing for you guys too? Or do they just do different farms for different markets? This is really interesting, interesting concept. Because I didn't think... I mean, it does say for market USA, so... Um, Anyways, so this was bottled again in August 2020. These are all part of the same release, so it makes sense. They're all bottled at the same time. Um, 6,000 barrels, 50% ABV. Uh, yeah, so JG says, Twitch is what I get on the morning after too much whiskey. Well, for those of you who don't know, Twitch is a gaming streaming channel. Very, very similar to YouTube. It's just gaming focused. That's where we're going to play our dating simulator after this stream. Um, Sugar Kitty says, I like the site that says, perhaps one dram too many. Maybe it should also say, hey, Cliffy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so if you type it wrong, it'll say, hmm, are you drunk, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, so Kian says, very young, but the few, few blends have made me very excited. And that's very, very exciting. Yeah, again, new distillery, so I'm really excited to see what's coming from their neck. So this is from Dunbell. About, it's a little more, I'd say a little more east than the other ones, um, according to the map. Again, you got the story here. If, if you guys want to go check out their website after, you'll... I'll put the codes down in the description. How about that? If you want the codes, probably tomorrow morning. So <laughs> if you're watching this now, save them as I'm typing them in or just go back to that point in the stream. But tomorrow morning, I'm going to put the codes in the description so you can go check it out yourselves. So anyways, let's go, let's go ahead and put on the sound of Dunbell. By the way, Dunbell, not Dunbell. Not like the um, not like the exercise equipment. All right. Oh, this is a little calming. This one seems way more chill. Now, what's the elevation of this one? The other one, I heard some, like, ocean waves going on. Or not ocean waves, but there's, like, a kind of, like, an there's, like, a water element, like, a water trickling. This one, elevation is, let's see, they tell us on here. Uh, maybe, maybe that's further down. <laughs> so, now it says, this track takes us around the fields at Dunbell. It's a windy but bright and sunny spring day under the Tula, Tula Heron Round Tower. We begin out in the barley, just under the trees in the south side of the fields. A tractor passes on a road nearby. We keep moving around the perimeter of the field up to the northern corner, where the trees come together to form a narrow V formation. So we'll enjoy we'll enjoy those sounds in the background as we learn a little bit more about Dunbell. So again, similar timeline. Again, these are the first releases. They're definitely gonna put more of these out. There's actually I think wait, where was what was the statistic? One second, what did I read? They sourced 80, 86 different Irish farms. Um, and they used 19 different soil types. So Adriana, that that's a really cool discussion topic. Because like I said, you're just in the soil. They used 19 different types of soil. Or these farms featured 19 different types of soil. They didn't use the soil. But you know, you get what I'm saying. That's actually really, really cool. So, all right. Let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and see what else we can learn here about this one. Timeline there. Location-wise. Um, oh, wow. This is definitely a different area. Yeah, it's way more north of Waterford. So there's, there's the difference there. Soil. The soil looks a little darker. It could just be the photo, but it does look a little darker to me. Um, elevation is 235 to 269. So about the same. Same amount of sunlight. Interesting. Same same yeast strain. Same fermentation. Um, some notes here from the distillery of what they what notes they get on it. But let's look at the wood, because y'all know I, I like the wood. I like learning about the wood. So, Well, first of all, let's, let's again, Heaven Hill. Good to see. Um, there's their their French stave and oh wow they use far less casks which it makes sense right this is half the amount of whiskey as the other ones put out only six thousand bottles so 
far fewer, small, small, small batch compared to the other few. Other few. So let's see. And then this one, well, they're using a Sauternes cast. They're not using Sherry for this one. They're using Sauternes. Um, they're using Virgin from Speyside Cooperage in Kentucky. So let's see. Well, this one is 33% first fill U.S., way more Virgin U.S. This Maybe this is going to have a lot more oak influence, like a, like a not quite like the, the bourbon influence, but more of an oak. Um, premium French, 26%, and 19% of the of the Sauternes cast. Now, maybe that means Sauternes is a very strong flavor. They didn't want it to impact it too much. Let's go and give this a try. Though. Let's see Let's see if, how that impacts the whiskey itself. <laughs> Adriana says, I am way too curious about the soils. Yeah, well, it's, it's really interesting that they focus on that and narrow that down. So let's, let's go ahead and give this a nose. Oh, wow. That's really rich and dense. That snows, snoses. That nose is like a typical, like a red breast almost. It, it, it's it's still got again. They all have that cereal note, but it has a shortbread kind of note that I dig, and I think it also that Sauternes cast a little goes a long way with that one. It must it must be because they used far fewer or a smaller amount of those barrels compared to the rest. But this one is fruity. Yeah, it's it's like it's like a toffee. When I, I I read toffee when I was reading their notes earlier, but yeah, yeah, it's it's richer. That's why I say it's like a rich, like sweet. This one, honestly, you know those like those baked notes I was looking for in the the one that was the Heaven Hill, the strong Heaven Hill influence. This one has it, so maybe that's coming more from the virgin oak versus coming from the used bourbon barrels. Man, this favorite nose so far, absolutely. Vastly different. I mean, I'm just going to go back to the one I just had. Still in the nose. Oop. Not my challenge going off. Yeah, this one This one is not doing it for me on the nose. The the, the Dunmore, I don't particularly love on the nose, but this Dunbell, beautiful nose. It smells like every good Irish whiskey I've ever had. Um, yeah, like vanilla, vanilla... Toasty, toasty vanilla. But there's some sweetness there. I'm not sure which which fruit. I gotta go in for a taste of it to see what that is. But digging the nose, so this may be my favorite. We'll see. Cheers, guys. Oh yeah, that's really good. It's okay. Since we're naming this after cereals. This one is like a, have you guys had the, um, they're not like frosted flakes, but they're like, they're like a, wait, wait, Special K with strawberry. Have y'all had those? They're kind of like creamy. They have like little, some of them have like little creamy yogurt bits. That's what I'm getting on the, on the, on the taste of this one. I can't tell if it's like strawberry or raisin, but that must be the Sauternes influence. Sorry for the. I promise there are no sirens like this in the middle of the farm. <laughs> wow, man, that's spicy. It's like a baking spice kind of note. How old is this? One? I, gotta, I gotta scroll back up to see the age on this one. <laughs> Adriana says, once, once I got the Heaven Hill notes, I was sold on this one. Oh yeah. This one is the most, maybe it is the most bourbon-like of any of these. Not that I always want an Irish whiskey to be bourbon, but it has those rich, rich vanilla dessert qualities that I love in a good bourbon. Let me see the age on this one. This one is, no, same, three years, eight months, and 26 days, so. But this one is smaller batch, so this one's a little more refined around the edges. It's not as massive of a batch. Wow. Okay, so I guess since we are in our final eight moments, eight, eight moments, <laughs> eight minutes of this stream, I'm gonna find out if I like the Dunbell or if I like the Rathclaw. Rathclaw. I forgot, I forgot already how to say it. <laughs> Let's see if I like the, like the Dunbell or the Rathclaw. Let's go back to the Rath, Rathclaw. Yeah, it's it's fruity, but it's more citrus fruit. Those are more like those rich red fruits. Again, they were sherry cats. These the, the other one was Sauternes, and Sauternes must have a massive influence on the flavor.
that one is still really good. I'm actually surprised how I went from loving that one to trying this one that I think is a lot better and being okay about that one. I did say I would buy that one. I would buy that one if I hadn't tried the other one, but now that I've tried the Dunbell, that's got to be my favorite. I would absolutely buy a bottle of the Dunbell. Let me, let me give another taste here. Uh-oh, I said something wrong. Small batch? Seriously? Okay, speaking in American terms, what? why am I wrong? Is it is it not a small batch, or is it a... Is that not small batch when it comes to Irish whiskey? Very curious, because small, small batch is a very broad term. Like, in American whiskey, people just slap that on a label. It doesn't mean anything. So, really curious to see... Um, yeah, what you think? Man, Dunbell, hands down. I will go back to the organic real quick, just for a final sip of the blend. That one is opening up a bit more. It's it's some of that fruitiness that I get on the Dunbell, but it's kind of overwhelmed by the grainy note of it. So I think the blend is good, but if you can get a single farm origin, I recommend the Dunbell of the three that I tried here tonight. So before before we wrap up, I gotta, I gotta hear what Kean says about um, small batch, because I'm curious. I'm actually genuinely curious. By the way, if anyone is joining us later, don't worry, we're not over. Um, we are doing a gaming stream on twitch where you're playing i love you colonel sanders which if you guys don't know it's it's very very cutesy dating simulator for colonel sanders so the link is over in the chat over there um give me about like five minutes between ending this and doing that i just gotta go get some water um and then we're ready to go for that one so okay so yeah he ends agreeing with what i was saying so small match doesn't really mean anything <laughs> so I, I didn't know if it had like a different meaning in irish whiskey whether it was more more like dialed in and what that means um but Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. What I meant by small batch when I was talking about this one is there were only 6,000 bottles. There were 13,000 of the other ones. That, that's what I was going for, so apologies. <laughs> Still learning, but man, this was such a fun experience. I am really excited to revisit Waterford maybe a couple of years down the line. Once they have some older whiskeys, I would love to see what they're doing. Although I would love to try all 84 expressions of their farms. Oh my God, could you imagine if I did a stream with 84 different single farms? <laughs> if you want to see that, leave a comment down below if you're watching the replay. Might happen, probably won't, but it's just an idea. So, <laughs> uh, Chris is showing up. Well, Chris, Chris, head over to Twitch. We're about to go stream on Twitch and play some um, Colonel Sanders, so I can meet my um, my chicken daddy. <laughs> All right. Well, again, Kian, thank you so much for being here, talking us through this. It's been a pleasure having you um, help us out, help me out because I'm struggling. Um, but everyone else, thank y'all so much for watching. Like I said, I won't be live on Thursday. I will be traveling, but sneak peek on Saturday, I'm gonna try to get my mom to do a stream with me. That's right, my mom joining me for a stream. I think I'm going to try to taste her through different whiskeys and see what she likes. So I think it should be fun. If, if I can convince her to do it, it should be a lot of fun. So keep an eye out for that next Saturday. And then again, the following following Thursday, I'll be live with Ed from Rockgut. And we're going to do some um, red breast cast strength. So <laughs> which farm sounds are you going to fall asleep to? That last one, that, that, that Dunbell, that was really soothing. So I could totally fall asleep to that. So... All right, like I said, cheers, guys. If you're not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you back on a future stream. But until next time, this has been Bourbon Bites, whiskey reviews with a gaming twist. I'm Clifton. Cheers, and I'll see you guys in I was like, in Colonel Sanders, but who knows? Who knows where we're going to go tonight? All right, cheers.